Richie Jeffo for the hour of deliverance. your Bible. Father, it's not by human might, it's not by human power, it is by your spirit. In the name that is above every other name, Jesus Christ, the son of a living God, I pray for every child, every boy, girl, man and woman, that, that hears the sound of my voice, that the word of God in power will touch your life and change your life forever. I bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Let me hear a very, very powerful amen. Amen. Sit down. Now, we are talking about a journey. Everybody say journey. journey. We are talking about a journey. A journey that ought to be 30 days at the most. The journey ended up being 38 years. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand what I said? Not 38 days. Not 38 weeks, 38 years. That means there was extra 37 years and 11 months. Now, I want you to understand that the promised land was across a little river. A brook. Did they see him like this? But for 38 years, they were just going around like this. No, it'd be like Chris. For 30 I'm side of a hookie masaida. Any journey you have started that refused to end. I pronounce judgment on that journey. Amen. And I command that journey to end in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said I command that journey to end in the name of Jesus. Amen. How can these people be seen? They, they were seeing it. But they couldn't get there. They were seeing where they were going on. But they could not get there. 30 days became 38 years. God, not great bad thing. What kind of life is that? How long will you pursue one contract? Just one contract. If you have to pursue one, one contract like that, you're not going to chop now. Raise your two hands up. Lift your two hands up. Shout and say, Lord. Lord. I cannot hear your voice. Shout and say, Lord. Lord. This journey is too long. This journey is too long. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By your miracle working power. By your miracle working power. Let this journey end. Let this journey end. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Perform a miracle. Perform a miracle. Let it end. Let it end. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let it end. Let it end. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sit down. Are you 
the first person that need to get married? Are you the first person that, that wants a child? Are you the first person that tried to go to school? Are you the first person that has wanted to be promoted? People are being promoted every day. Is it not true? Yes, sir. Yes. This journey is too long. That's what the Lord told me. He said, it, it's too long. God said, you've gone around this mountain long enough. It's enough. Do you know that an unmarried person in the next three months can be married? Yes, sir. The journey will just end. You keep fighting the same battle. When you think that the thing is finished, you start again. You think that the thing is over, you start again. Raise your right hand. Raise your right hand again. I'm, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm angry about this thing. Shout to say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever is fueling this battle. Whatever that is fueling this battle. Whatever is prolonging this journey. Whatever that is prolonging this journey. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I destroy you. I destroy you. Remove your hand from my Remove life. Your hand. And let this journey end. And let this journey end. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe in your prayer, I want to hear a very strong amen. amen. I am still talking about unbelief. Unbelief is a very, very serious factor. It's one of the major reasons why it took 38 years. That's why we must deal with it. The Bible says they could not enter because of oh, talk to me. They could not enter because of unbelief. It's in the Bible. So it's, it's, a, it's a major thing that must be dealt with. Now, in the first service I said discouragement is a son of what? Unbelief. Look, talk to me. Unbelief. Of unbelief. Unbelief gave birth to many children. One is discouragement, but the other one is fear. The mother of fear is what? Unbelief. Let me give you an example. In Job chapter 3 verse 25, Job said, the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. Now, I, 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 I think I will leave it. I will come back. I will come back to it. Let me go in a different direction first. So keep, keep, just keep that scripture. We are coming back to it. But mama, I, I, I want to, yes, I have to do this. I, I want to I want to talk about the positive kind of fear before I deal with the negative kind of fear because we must fear God because we must do what fear God we must do what fear God yes we must fear God and there must be people in our lives whom we fear or respect, if you want to use another word. There must, there must be people in your life who can tell you, shut up. And that's it. There must be people in your life who can say, it's enough. And that's it. Without explaining anything to you. If you don't have them, you are a disaster going somewhere to happen. You are out of control. No matter how high your IQ is, you will never be able to solve your problem. There must be somebody or some persons in your life who can tell you, stop! 
and you just check yourself. Say, I, I don't feel like stopping, but since you have said so, finish. Are you sure you are with me? Yes, sir. How can you live in this world and nobody can tell you, shut up? What kind of life are you living? That is what destroys something in the Bible. Do you know that? Yes. He went to find a wife among the Philistines. He went to find a wife in the wrong place. And he told his father to come and endorse it. And the father said, you mean you can't find a wife among your own people? He said, no. He said, that's the one I want. You want to marry your married unbeliever? He said, that's the one I want. Those of you who read your Bible, read it very well. Read it very well. You discover that his father never spoke to him again. And that was his downfall. A man that could carry the gates of a city died in a miserable way. It was a small boy that led him. He said, he said hey, show me the pillar. Hey, Samson. A whole Samson. May children not lead you. I don't think you heard what I said. If you refuse to listen to your father, then children will lead you. I said, may children not lead you. May it not get to that point in your life where little children will now be leading you. Amen. When you read Luke chapter 19 from verse 31 to 34, you will read Jesus wanted to enter Jerusalem in a big way. And he said, to his disciples, he said, go to so and so junction. You will see a young horse tied. He said, when you get there, lose it. He said, when you are losing it, if anybody come and say, who are you, where are you? He said, tell the person the Lord has need of it. And they went. When they saw it, as they were losing it, read it there. The Bible says the owner, the man went taking money, buy him. That's what owner means. The owner Say, what? Wait a minute. Only. They say, no. We were sent by the Lord. The Lord has need of it. And that was it. No more question. <laughs> eh? Immediately they said, the... ah. Who speaks into your life. Whom do you fear? You know, I hear people say, I fear no man. I like that too. It's good. Yes. I only fear God. Very good. Have you seen God? Where you see him? There must be somebody, a human being, apart from God that you have high respect for who can tell you you cannot do this thing if you don't listen you have destroyed yourself are you hearing what I'm saying and if you listen no matter how bad that situation is get ready for a turnaround you didn't hear what I said because of your obedience the God of heaven will honor you ready for a turn around if you believe it let me hear the man like thunder do you 
know that is why sometimes the work of God does not move. Because everybody wants to analyze everything. Everybody. Uh, you want to know? After all, we went to school together. After all, I'm older than you. If you, if you cannot get to the point where you hear something and just take it and move on, the Lord has need of it. There was no more story. Okay, he has need of it. Why? It's okay, he wants to enter Jerusalem. How many hours? Okay, five hours. Five hours, five hours. I can only release it for three. All right, for the five hours. You go give the animal food. It's okay, they will give him grass. He said, no, this one, not they eat grass. This one, they eat uh, <laughs> sandwich. The story will go on. Go on. That's our problem. Lift your hands up. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, how I love. I love. Calling your name. Verse 13, the Bible says, this is the fear of the Lord, to hate evil. If you say you fear God, you will do what? Hate evil. You hate it. If you read 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 6, Jehoshaphat just appointed new judges. And he said to the judges, he said, be careful of what you do. He said, because you are not judging for man, you are judging for God. In verse 7, he said, let the fear of God come upon you. If you continue to read, he said, they should not take bribe. They must not be respecter of persons and the rest of you. You see it all there? But in that verse 7, he said, let the fear of God do what? Come upon you. That is judges. Those who judge cases. Second Chronicles 19, 6 and 7. Tell your neighbor, going, I fear God. Tell your neighbor. I fear God. They cannot hear you. Tell your neighbor, I fear God. I fear God. Clap your hands and give God praise. Now, you fear God, but then 
sit down. There is another kind of fear that is not from God. It is a demonic spirit that pursues you and takes you back. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This other kind of fear, it comes from the pit of hell. And I must address it very quickly because it was given birth to by unbelief. This kind of fear did not come from God. It did not come from God. That's why I quoted Job chapter 3 verse 25 where Job said, what did he say? The thing that I greatly feared has done what has come upon me. Now watch this. What did Job fear? Are you with me? Job was afraid that what God gave him, he will lose. Why was he afraid? He was afraid because he did not believe that God can protect what he gave you. I don't think you are hearing me. That was why Job feared. Job feared because he could not believe what? That what God gave him, God can protect. He did not believe that God can protect what God gives. That's why he was afraid. God, who gave you a pregnancy, he will protect it. Amen. God, who gave you a husband, he will protect him. Amen. God, who gave you those children, he will protect them. Amen. God, who gave you the business, he will protect it. Amen. Raise your right hand. Say, Lord. Lord. I know. I know. You have the power. You have the power. To give. To and to protect. To protect what you have given. You have given. I, believe you, I believe you, Lord. If you believe it, shout the Lord. Amen. Listen. If God cannot protect what he gave you, don't accept anything from God. I don't think you are hearing me. If God cannot protect what he gives you, then if God gives you anything, not take him. Because that thing is going to be tested. Anything God gives you will be tested. If the person who gave you cannot protect it, you don't need it. But I can assure you that the God whom I serve the God whom I serve he is the same yesterday he is the same today he is the same forever if you believe it shall be yes when you read Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1 Moses said to Israel he said when you are Masudima he said when you go to war against your enemies and you see their horses you see their chariots and you see that the people are more than you he said don't be afraid of them why why look at it he said because the lord thy god is with you your enemy they have more horses they have more chariots they are more in number don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid. The conclusion of the matter is not in their hand. Whether they believe in God or not, it is God that will still decide the matter. Somebody in a Makasiba, the Kurima Sikim, and Irema Sahidamaha, Sakoba in a Masidi Bakuriba Dasa. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord that seated on the throne, and I use the earth as a footstool. I am your God. I am your God. I have the universe in my hand, and I determine and undermine and decide and I direct and I project. I bring down and I make sure that my children remain on top. I am the Lord your God. I have fought battles. I have never lost. I will win this one also. 
for I am your God I will show you that I am the one that called you out of darkness into light you will see my light and you will rejoice in it says the spirit of the Lord go ahead and celebrate him celebrate him Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. chapter 6 in verse 13 the king of Syria sent men to spy Elisha do you know that there are people who are spying on you sometimes they do it physically sometimes they do it through the water Sometimes they do it in witchcraft, but they are spying on you. That's why sometimes before you make a move, they know. Because they are spying on you. But don't worry. Wipe your tears. You will not cry for anybody. You will not cry another man's cry. They cried. They wanted you to cry. You have transferred it back to them. Everybody say, you cry. We don't do Santa. I will not cry this cry. So he sent people to spy. In verse 14, the Bible tells us that they spied and they told him where Elisha was. They told him. So, in verse 14, the Bible says, at night, he gathered his chariots and horses, and they surround at night. Night. Most havocs are committed at night. If you read Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 5, the Bible is prophetically talking about the church. And the word of God says, let us arise in the night and destroy her palaces. You know, what, what the Bible is talking about is whatever God gave you that makes you happy. Let us arise. That's what, that's what they are saying. Let us arise and destroy her palaces. Is that what, not what it says? Yes. So let us arise at night. At what time? At night. And destroy her palaces. That's their mind. That's what they have in mind. But in Psalm 91 verse 5, the Bible says, you will not be afraid of the terror that flies in what time? In the night! In Psalm 121 verse 6, the Bible says, the moon will not smite you when? At night. They manipulate the moon. The moon is supposed to give light in the night. It's supposed to be a blessing. But they manipulate the moon. They make the moon to turn against you. And they begin to communicate with it. To use it to work against you. They do it in witchcraft. Some of them, they do it from, from what you call uh, 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 astral projection. They project themselves. They leave their body. It's more than witchcraft, what I'm telling you now. They do it in, in, in Amok. They do it in some of these cults. And they begin to use the moon. Some of you notice that people go crazy mostly in the night. Because it is the moon that they use. 
they begin to use the moon to manipulate your mind to use the moon to begin to manipulate things then when you wake up in the morning i mean i have seen people they were normal at, when, when they went to bed they woke up in the morning they have lost their mind but god says the moon will not smite you whatever they have spoken into the moon we speak back to the moon and i say to the moon oh thou moon you were created by my god you will not answer whatever evil people have spoken into you you will refuse it you will reject it you will walk in my favor return to them the evil that they intended let it happen in their home let it happen in their life everybody say in the name of jesus oh thou moon you will not fight against me go back fight against those who fight against me in the name of jesus if you believe it let me hear an amen like thunder I'm talking about the night. I will soon close. Stay with me. If you look at Luke chapter 5, verse 5, when Jesus told Peter, launch out into the deep, Peter said, We have toiled all night. Ah! We are fishermen, we are experts. Now, night, now that they catch fish. We have done everything at night. We labored. We labored. But the fish will not enter the net. Listen to me. What they manipulated in the night, God will correct it in the day. Amen. You didn't hear what I said. I said what they manipulated in the night, God will correct it in the day. God will not wait till another night. Weeping may endure for one night, but joy comes in the morning. God is not going to wait for another night to come. Whatever they manipulated in your life, whatever they manipulated in your job, whatever they manipulated in your business, whatever they manipulated in your marriage, whatever they manipulated in your destiny, God will correct it in the day. If you believe it, let me hear an amen like thunder. The same water, the same fish that refused to enter the net at night, brought daylight. An announcement went to the fish world. They said, the master has spoken. Find your way to that net. Go to Peter's net. It is their time. Whatever evil they did at night, I don't know who you are. Your net is calling them. God has put his hand on your net. It has been corrected. The pregnancy they spoiled in the night. You will get it back in the day. The house that they destroyed in the night. You will build it back in the day. The business they took from you in the night. You will receive it back in the day. What you couldn't do in the night. You will do it in the day. I said you will do it in the day. I said you will do it in the day. The marriage they denied you by night. God will give it to you in the day. If you believe it, let me hear an amen like thunder. Whatever was working against you in the night, we begin to obey you in the day. I am a child of the light. Tell your neighbor, I am a child of the light. I am a child of the night of the light. All ye night, obey the light. I said, all ye night, obey the light. Oh my God, as I'm speaking, the heavens are reacting. There is a movement in the spirit world. There is something reacting in the night. Oh, ah, ah. What is it that they did in the night? In the broad daylight, God is going to touch your womb. 
Touch your mind. Touch your job. Touch your business. Touch your son. Touch your daughter. Wherever they are, everybody say power. Say power. Say power. Elisha's servant in verse 15 said, Master, out of fear. Hey, he said, we are finished. They have surrounded us. In verse 16, Elisha said to him, he said, fear not. They that are with us are more. Amen. But God, now only you will see What you cannot see controls what you see. If you live your life by what you see, I'm sorry for you. Because what you don't see is what is controlling what you see. So if you, if you want to control what you see, go into the realm of where people don't see. And I will show it to you now in a minute. And we close. Oh God, I feel the anointing in the house. I feel things cracking. Things are cracking. Things are cracking. They are cracking. Oh, everybody say results. 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 Possibilities. 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 Oh, yes. When, oh, my God. When Elisha looked at his servant, when he said, they are with us are more, he noticed that the young man was just saying this. I said, the man, don't start again. He said, the man, the man has started again. He said, the man has started. He has started again. So in verse 17, watch verses 17 and 18. Because that's where you are going to pray now. You are going to pray. That's how we are going to conclude. In verse 17, we are looking at 2 Kings chapter 6. In verse 17, Elisha said to God concerning his servant. He said, Open his eyes. Let him see. And the Bible says he opened his eyes and he saw. Then in verse 18 he said, close their eyes, blind them. And the Bible says God blinded them and they could not see. Listen to me. If you must control the physical, you must control the spiritual. And if you must control the spiritual, then you must know what is happening in the spiritual. So what did God do? He opened that man's eyes and closed the eyes of the enemy. Because if your eyes are open and their eyes are open, you will compete. Lesser power does not compete with superior. You see, as long as your eyes are closed, their eyes are open. But see what Elisha did. He said, Lord, open my, my own servant. Lord, open his own eye. But he said, these people, oh. Now the prayer, you won't pray now, but this oh. You are going to ask God to open your own eyes to see where water is when they say there's no water. To see where there is solution where people thought there's no solution. Blind my enemies. Let them be confused. Let their journey be prolonged. Let them go around the mountain. Ah, ah, ah. Why do you think they could not cross that place? They were seen, but they could not see. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Raise your right hand. Stand on your feet. You are going to ask God to open your own eyes. You don't need a prophet. You will be a prophet to yourself. You are going to ask God to open your own eyes. You will see where solution is. You will begin to know what you didn't know. Illumination. What you could not know before you will know because at the same time as God is opening your eyes, he's blinding the eyes of your enemies. So they cannot compete with you. Blind man cannot compete with a man that can see. You don't hear what they talk so? Raise your right hand. Uh -huh. Are you ready to pray this prayer? Are you sure you are ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> To the extent that your enemies are going to depend on you. Oh yes. Read it. It was Elisha that led them. Say follow me. Say yes sir. Yes sir. The people who came to kill him. He said come. Say, yes sir. 
Why? Because they were blind. Now they are blind. Now his own eyes are open. Raise your right hand. Shout and say, Lord. Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. To see what I couldn't see before. To see what I couldn't see before. To know what I couldn't know before. To know what I couldn't know before. To get what I couldn't get before. Blind my enemies. So that they cannot compete with me. They will depend on me. I will be the one to show them the way. Open them out and turn it to your prayer. your two hands on your head. Let this anointing flow from your head to your toes. It's a prayer. I said let this anointing flow from your head to your toes. Let it enter into every tissue. Every vein. Every blood vessel. Every cell. Every nerve. Every organ. Every bone. Every marrow. Every joint. Receive it in the name of Jesus. In 2011, your head will not lack oil. Ah, I command your eyes to open. You will not miss your way anymore. The journey has been shortened for you. I said the journey has been shortened for you. Amen. What will have, would have taken you 10 years is going to take you 3 months. Amen. I said the journey has been shortened for you. Amen. Where you had no helper, many helpers will appear. Amen. Where you had no solution, solution will appear. Amen. Where you had no way out, the way out will appear. Amen. Anyone that has spoken ill about you, anyone that has raised up their hand, raised up their voice, raised up their head against you, I command their hand with that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let their hand dry up. Amen. The head that they lifted up against you they will never again be able to move that head. The voice that they raised up against you, they will never again be able to use that voice. Father, silence them in the name of Jesus! You will ride over your enemies. You will rule over your enemies. You will have dominion over your enemies. Amen. The Lord stabilize your life. Amen. Return to me with testimony. Amen. I said you will return to me with testimony. Amen. Ah, I said you will return to me with testimony. Amen. Ah, I said you will return to me with testimony. Amen. Ah, I said you will return to me with testimony. Amen. The one that was hard, it has become soft. The one that was difficult, it has become easy. The one that human beings said was impossible, it has become possible. If you believe it, let me hear an amen like thunder. You will be an example of blessing. Amen. Fear is far from you. Amen. Your habitation will not contain fear. Amen. Fear cannot stay in your heart. Amen. It cannot stay in your house. Amen. It cannot stay in your neighborhood. Amen. Fear, go! Fear, go! Go! 
I bless your hands. Amen. I bless your feet. Amen. The hands with which you walk Amen. produce results. Amen. The feet with which you, you walk around produce results. Amen. You will not walk into your enemy's trap. Amen. You will walk into your breakthroughs. Amen. I bless you in the name of God the Father. Amen. God the Son. Amen. God the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you believe in my prayer, let me hear an amen that is bigger than you. Yeah. If you believe that you will get results out of this prayer, let me hear another amen that is bigger than you. by Pastor Ayo with his beautiful teaching and preaching during the Hour of Deliverance. If you have need for a special prayer, our counselors are waiting to pray with you or call any of the members listed. We encourage you to be a part of our church family at Word of Life Bible Church in Warwick. Our ministry needs your support and prayer and your financial assistance. Your gift will be used to spread the Word of God throughout our country and to the world. Please write to us at Post Office Box 2088, Wari, Nigeria. 